Pacific Highway upgrade, uh, the dual carriageway, is, uh, is one of the very big deals there. But those in this room, I'm sure, will be very interested in the loss carryback provisions, which uh, is, is the last column there. This is quite important for small business, uh, quite important indeed. Uh, and there's a few things here for small business which, uh, which are worth taking account of. Uh, a loss carryback uh, indicates that if you're profitable this year, but you dip into the red because of an investment outlay, you can then deduct that back against prior profits. Okay? And that is a valuable thing in an era where manufacturing, for instance, is suffering from the high currency and competitiveness issues. And it may be that they need quite substantial capital expenditures to bridge that competitiveness gap. But because their sales aren't great right now, they may have to dip into the red to do that. But because they were profitable in the past, they will be able to use the tax system to help them out. So the loss carryback is a big deal, and uh, it was something that was in the Henry Tax Review a few years ago, and it's only actually got focused now. Uh, on the vehicle side of things, accelerated depreciation, uh, $5,000 up front uh, for new or used. Uh, good news for the... Uh, for the small business sector where commercial vehicles uh, are there and also accelerated depreciation on other assets, other eligible assets. Uh, this used to have a $1,000 cap on the, uh, on the upfront. Uh, it's now six and a half. So there's actually quite a good little example in the budget papers of how this might work. Uh, let's say you're a printing business and you, you purchase six, six new, sorry, four new copies uh, at $6,000 each. Under the old system, you can only write off $1,000 of each of those instantaneously. Now, each $6,000 machine will qualify. So, lifting this threshold, I think, really does matter for small business because they're the, they're the group which are buying capital equipment which is expensive um, for them uh, and over this that one thousand dollar threshold, but maybe isn't absolutely extravagant. We're not talking hundreds of thousands or millions for this sort of equipment, so that threshold makes sense, and I think it will be used, and I think it will assist small business through this difficult transition period with the very high currency and the cautious consumer. Um, just just very quickly on this. Uh, what I'm trying to emphasise on this particular chart is the symmetry between savings and shifts in the economy which put them a little bit behind the eight ball on this year. Basically, in this year itself, they've done just enough to stand still. This surplus is an enormous political policy focus for the government. They were never going to miss it. and. Uh, they found as much as they needed to find to make sure that the numbers barely shifted. And uh, that was always going to be the case. Our hope going forward is that there is uh, there's less uh, sort of fine massaging of the fiscal position and uh, a little less focus on what the dollar figure is at the end of the day and a little more focus on the mix of policy throughout the economy. But what are they saying about the economy itself uh, versus what we're saying? Uh, we're not dramatically different in terms of our view of where things are going. We both see uh, some areas doing well, some areas doing poorly. Uh, a lot of people uh, in between those two extremes. Uh, we don't think the world economy is as strong as they do. Uh, we're quite pessimistic about uh, the European situation. Uh, nonplussed by the United States. Uh, we do think that China is going to be uh, recovering at, uh, by the end of the year, but it's uh, inescapable that China is actually quite soft right now uh, and is not stimulating our economy in any way. And thus, we think the 3.5% that the government is indicating there on world GDP growth is a little optimistic. 
But when it comes back to uh, the domestic economy, we don't have really uh, too many arguments there. Uh, and we both agree that the Reserve Bank should be uh, pushing the cash rate considerably lower. So on to the Australian consumer. And uh, even if you're in a business to business type of firm, uh, at the end of the day it's household demand which drives the economy. And the things that we like to focus on to get a handle on the consumer psyche in Australia are these four, these four indicators. Uh, what do they think about their income, which is all about job security? What do they think about their wealth, which is all about house prices? What do they think about their levels of debt, which is their demand for credit? And what do they think about interest rates, which is how much it is physically costing them to service the debt they have? I'm not going to focus on the last two. I'm going to look very, very closely at the first two. Now, Westpac does the Consumer Sentiment Index for Australia. There is uh, a fantastic database of information here on the psyche of Australian households. And what we've noted uh, over the last 18 months to two years is that Australian households have just been becoming really anxious about their own finances. They thought the economy is in reasonable position because they read about the mining boom in the newspaper, but when they, you actually ask them specifically, well, how are your family's finances going? They're not in a good mood at all. You can see that, the gap between these two lines, and more recently, uh, the decline in consumers' perceptions of their own finances has been consistent with periods when the overall economy's been doing very poorly indeed. So we put a lot of store in this survey and it's one of the things which uh, got us to be uh, got us on the uh, rate cut story very early last year when most of our competitors and even the Reserve Bank uh, were still arguing that rates might have to go up. Although it's a it's a mixed story because Australians are still spending on certain things. What are they spending on? Well they're certainly spending on overseas travel. Uh, in record numbers. Now I'm sure a lot of people in this room have taken an overseas holiday, uh, may have taken multiple overseas holidays taking advantage of where the Australian dollar is over the last couple of years. Well, you're not alone because departures and international travel have gone to record levels. This is killing the domestic industry. A lot of those travellers used to holiday at home. And the fact that foreigners aren't coming here in great numbers because the currency's so high is also hurting. And so Australians are choosing to, in a discretionary way, spend quite a bit of money on certain things. They're not spending on others. They're not going into the shops. They're not buying clothing. They're not buying footwear. Uh, the retail industry is really suffering. And as goes consumer confidence, so goes business confidence. That's what this chart is telling you. Uh, businesses cannot disconnect themselves from the state of the household sector. We're not just uh, an export economy who sends cars overseas. Uh, that's not what we do. Uh, we're very much domestically driven. And you can see, once you start looking at individual industries, whether it's uh, manufacturing, construction, uh, recreation, etc., um, things aren't particularly good. They're not calamitous by any means. Uh, but they're certainly a bit mixed. And all of this has come back to a situation where the labour market is actually weakening uh, against the expectations of many a year ago.